Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious as he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off. And he shall command peace to the nation, to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the world's pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. My sisters, my brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I don't know how many of you guys were uh, fans of the Godfather series of movies, um, but uh, when we get into Godfather 3, Don Michael Corleone, who has now grown up uh, literally in the business and taken over from his father into his senior years, is trying to pull the family out of the mafia world, to extricate them from the world of organized crime, get into legitimate business, get away from all that. But the young and up-and-coming mafiosos have a way pulling them back in again and again. At one point in the movie, he blurts out in frustration, just when I thought I had gotten us out, they pull me back in again. I believe we've all had similar experiences, probably not to that extreme degree, but we all have those repetitive things in our lives, those bad habits, those little sinful tendencies that we seem to return to, no matter how frustrating it is for us. And that's the dynamic Paul is talking about in our second lesson today. He dramatizes it as a conflict between his physical self, his, his external self, his, his flesh, and his uh, internal self, his mind or his will. He wants to follow the ways of God. He chooses that. We keep slipping back into old bad habits, old sins that embarrass him. But he doesn't end there. He gives us a quick conclusion, praising Christ for being the doorway out of that mess, for being his salvation. And again, we've all had that kind of experience, I'm sure, one way or another. It may be that we have this habit of letting out a few colorful phrases when we lose our temper and then later regret it. Or it may be something more serious, uh, getting impatient in traffic and driving with too much aggression too fast, becoming dangerous. We want to do better. We know we need to improve. But somehow we keep falling back into it. Our gospel story, we have again the reminder that there's a way out. That Jesus offers us a different gift that's more gracious and more joyful and more powerful. All the more dramatized in this passage when we take time to reflect historically that yoke was not simply metaphor drawn on the, the way you hitched animals of burden up to a cart or a plow, but was also a metaphor for the yoke of Jewish law, for the 640 some odd regulations that you had to follow to be an observant Jew. Jesus dramatically tells his audience, his congregation, I offer you better way, a lighter yoke, a lifting of the burden, a way out of the trap. The question, of course, is how do we access that way? How do we receive it? And the answer to that is where I and preachers like me become broken records repeating, sleeping over and over again. 
Because the answer is prayer. We open ourselves to receive that gift, that empowerment from Christ, to our prayer. And yes, it can be a little spooky to turn to God in a private moment and say, I did it again. I did it again. But we need to remind ourselves what Jesus offers us is not the weighing us down with guilt, but lifting us up, removing the burden, empowering us to take the steps we need to make progress day in and day out. I did it again. Help me with this. I need your grace. We ask for the grace, for the blessing that we need. The same kind of dynamic is talked about in the 12-step communities. I've come to accept that I'm powerless over whatever, alcohol, drugs, whatever the case may be. But I recognize in my higher power in God what I need to get me out of it, to start the process day in, day out, recovery, of healing, of growth, into a healthier life. My brothers and sisters, it is a kind of a broken record. Turning to God in our prayer, in those private moments, when we gather to worship, when we share our faith, when we share the word, when we share the sacrament, that's the doorway out. That's the path Jesus offers. That relationship Loving God in return for God's love for us, and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Coming to Christ again and again. I did it again. I screwed up. Help me. We open our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and our bodies, and receive the grace we need to take another step forward, to move a little bit further away our habitual bad habits, our habitual sins, those things that embarrass us, that we really want to be rid of. So my brothers and sisters, once again, let us be people of prayer.